Uh, obviously, we've had a bit of a day today. Uh, just want to give you an update on a few things. I guess uh, some of the damage that's occurred, uh, what's going to happen in the next little while, and uh, some uh, advisories we'd like to make. Um, so we've been talking to Environment Canada, and uh, we're expecting the rain to decrease and tail off, which is great. Is uh, is going to drop both seasons, so we're going to have uh, uh, some difficulties potentially with water lines and uh, as well with roads and slippery conditions and things like that. Our staff are, uh, are monitoring that, of course. Uh, we're expecting it, so we're gonna be doing some things. Donnie and his crew are gonna be mitigating that problem. Um, the uh, staff are currently working on, I guess, uh, fixing or dealing with some of the problems uh, that we have from a road, sidewalk, washout perspective. There's not uh, a lot we can do right away, of course, but we're gonna try and make sure that further damage doesn't occur. We can save what infrastructure we can. Uh, fire department, public works, uh, the RNC, everyone's on alert, and uh, we're not going home, going to bed quite yet. So this afternoon, uh, we got council passed a resolution uh, declaring a state of emergency, and uh, again, that occurs, when that occurs, we're saying that the resources are beyond our capacity to control the situation. Um, it also uh, involves, I guess, uh, activating an emergency plan of sorts, although we've been sort of working through that all day with our team downstairs. Um, we've got police, the ASL, Red Cross were called in to work with the city officials to manage the situation. We've had a significant, I guess, uh, impact on our infrastructure. Um, I can't uh, overstate that. Um, roads have been washed out, um, sidewalks, um, a lot of drainage has been damaged. We've got damage to our uh, walking trails. Our, our public works depot is, uh, in, has serious damage. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to go back in that building. The, uh, like I said, storm sewer, a uh, storm system is, uh, is uh, damaged. Uh, we've had several water outages. I think right now, uh, Donnie, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had two major ones earlier today, yep. and we're back up and running now. The water should be on any minute. Okay, so we had one fixed and then the other one, and they were on a main feeder there over at uh, Elizabeth Street. So uh, that's good news, but like I said, because of the weather and the temperatures, we can expect more outages probably. Um, the, and of course, needless to say, there's potholes galore. Uh, that happens, of course, because the water starts running out of pipes, and out of storm sewers, and just off the ground, and undermines our roads. So, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to try and mitigate some of the further damage that's going to happen overnight. Uh, but, uh, we're going to, uh, again, be giving you some advice on avoiding some of that. Um, there's a road closure update. Uh, the Main Street Bridge remains closed although water seems to be holding for now. Um, Lower Elizabeth Street is closed, Woodbine Avenue, uh, top of Woodbine, uh, Porter's Lane, Upper Booms Road, Upper Walborns, um, let's see, what else? Charles Street, I think we have some damage out at Petrie's, uh, Griffin Drive, Reeds Road, uh, Maple Valley Road also had some damage and some water pooling there. Uh, like I said, our, Depot really had a lot of damage and was temporarily closed. So uh, we're going to be able to assess them under that a little better in the daylight, of course. Now, in the meantime, we're asking that everyone avoid the parks and trail systems, uh, especially now that it's dark. We don't know where water is going. We don't know how stable it is. So uh, please don't, don't venture if you don't have to be careful. Um, we're encouraged members of the public to report any vulnerable areas. Um, we have, of course, our, uh, our problem or our complaint, why we call it. Uh, please, if you have problems, call 637-1666. Um, I'd encourage you to do that before even calling, and I'm not doing this to just push off the work. But don't call your counselor, call that number. And uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we got potholes everywhere. Uh, there's a lot of undermining going on. We don't know where they're gonna pop up. If you don't have to go out this evening, you don't have to drive, don't. Because potholes can appear just like that, and then you could be in serious trouble. So please stay home, and uh, let's wait till the daylight, and.
hopefully um, it won't be too long to get these things sold. In terms of the infrastructure, the roads specifically, <clears throat> some of the roads are obviously visibly damaged, so Elizabeth Street comes to mind. Others, I guess, are both precautionary, Main Street being mm -hmm. one that hasn't any visible damage. So can you give us any idea, any sense as to the damage, or the roads that are closed, how many are physically damaged, and how, how many others are, I guess, closed as a precaution? There's a lot of damage you'll notice around the sides of the roads and the shoulders of the roads where water runs along the side. Um, that's a problem. We have places like Reed's Road where we've had significant problems. Uh, the top of Reed's Road is washed out quite a bit. Uh, we don't know how much damage is done underneath the bottom of Reed's Road right now. Um, Does that mean you don't have access to certain gear or vehicles and is it you know slowing down services? Well I'll let uh, Donnie fill in a little bit but uh, I know earlier today we had water uh, going through the floors of the depot. Uh, so, again, flowing across, uh, coming out the door. So, uh, elect electrically, of course, that means problems. We've had electricians in, as I understand, um, making sure things are safe, of course. I think we were relegated to one part of the depot for a bit of time there, so we can still communicate and coordinate our effort to, uh, to deal with the problems. So yeah, our depot is, is uh, it's damaged. Uh, it's going to be uh, tomorrow morning. We have a restoration company coming in to really assess the damage and see uh, how quickly we can get back in the building. Uh, right now, it's not affecting our operations or our response time. Uh, our, our equipment is all out of the depot and everything is ready to go. You mentioned you, you may get back in, and the mayor mentioned his remarks that you may never be able to use the building again. So. Where are we? That's two different kind of scenarios. Well, we won't know until until the restoration company comes in tomorrow and, and gives us a full right. assessment. Uh, right now, we're, we are out of the depot. Uh, we're, we're using one small part for the foreman. Uh, we have a backup at the fire department if need be. So uh, until tomorrow morning when the, when the restoration company is in, we, we don't know how bad the, uh, the building is. So is there a general sense that you probably won't, if the damage is probably more severe than, than not, less fixable, I guess. What I mean. Well, I haven't been up there uh, yet, um, but uh, I got a call this afternoon looking for keys to my office because the water was flowing <coughs> under my door. So I, I suspect it's, it's, it's quite serious up there. So all the heavy equipment obviously is outside. And as you say, if you can access it, uh, one of the things that building is obviously used for is maintenance. And so what happens when we have situations now where you get some of your rigs may break down and as it work through this repair process, where do, you, where do you get those things? The garage itself, uh, the garage itself is, is not affected. Uh, we can work out of our garage. We have uh, adequate sump pumps and, uh, and drainage in our garage that our, our ramps and stuff are still working. It's just a matter of a moral cleaning up the office space and also uh, getting the electrician in to make sure that everything in the garage is still safe for the guys to use. But right now, it's, we're, we're fine for now. We talked a lot about state of mind answers, that extra help. We talked about how much money you're, you're looking at here? As really preliminary, uh, we're in millions of dollars. And I think I, I think it's safe to say, uh, based on the uh, road washouts and uh, again, property damage, uh, I don't, uh, I have no doubt. And you're encouraging people to call the number, I assume, but this is a very unusual circumstance. You must be inundated with calls. How are you handling this massive amount of uh, damage? Well, I mean, again, I urge people, be understanding today. If you have a complaint that's not an urgent complaint, you know, please refrain. Uh, we are dealing with a lot of water. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Donnie and his team have been at it now for, well, pushing 24 hours. Besides all the prep work they did to make sure storm drains and things were free. Uh, so uh, they're, we're, we're going full out. Um, I think that uh, we had had some complaints earlier in the day, I think that we were able to deal with. I think uh, uh, in town we had some drains and things we were able to free up and keep the water going so to, again, prevent some damage. But yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult. The streams and the parks and that kind of thing. And state of emergency, you know, are you encouraging people to stock up? Is there a fear of power outage or water shortages? No, I think what's so, uh, so uh, I guess, troublesome with, uh, with this situation was, for much of the town, it wasn't. Uh, it didn't seem like a, a bad day. Um, but uh, of course, if you live at the bottom of uh, Elizabeth, or you're around Boone's Road, or you're around, uh, you know, some parts of Curling, it was a very bad day. Um, so I don't think that it we're uh, in any immediate danger from that perspective. Uh, but uh, again, um, just use caution for now. 
don't go out if you don't have to. Like I said, our infrastructure is uh, it's in a it's in a rough spot right now. We're going to have some water outages potentially. We don't know we will, but given the fact that the temperature is going down, I think to minus two or so by the morning, all that heaving is going to do something. Um, so again, let's not the sky's not falling, but let's take care. Can you walk us through the process of declaring a state of emergency? Because that's not something that's done major or frivolously by any municipality. Uh, you mentioned that you know there's people in town who would never even say there's, there's a problem, and yet there's other places that it looks like a disaster zone. So how do you make that that decision whether or not this is you know something that we'll say worthy of a state of emergency as opposed to maybe just a you know a difficult time? Well, I think that there's a, there's a few things. I mean, outside of our own situation here, we've got to consider that we've had. Uh, a major outage uh, road washout, of course, just to the east of us. Now I'm understanding there's one to the west of Cornerbrook as well. Uh, we have to provide, of course, we have a hospital here um, that provides services both east and west of our uh, own area. Um, so uh, uh, we have emergency services. Sometimes we have to worry about getting access to certain places. We did, and again, Todd, I'll let you expand on this after, but we had a situation where we did, I think, take a, a, pre, a preemptive uh, measure to evacuate uh, some people out of a home uh, because we weren't sure how we would deal with it if the waters continued to rise around the Bellsburg area. And um, so, uh, yeah, there is a, a Todd uh, is uh, really doing a lot to forward our uh, emergency response. So, uh, Todd, I don't know if you want to. Sure. About how we uh, make that decision. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's not taken lightly, but we do do a risk assessment. We look at what uh, what's happening, look at what had potentially happened, and then make a decision based on risk from that point. Uh, that, that decision did force us into a state of emergency, uh, given the fact that the province, the west coast of the province, was experiencing um, similar conditions all around us, and that forced us into that decision for sure. I guess play into any cleanup that's involved. I mean, we hear of other municipalities that declare state of emergency, they get assistance, whether it be from a provincial agency or a federal agency, because obviously the city has a lot of work to do to rebuild and repair, and you have limited resources based on staffing and whatnot. So how do you anticipate the, the cleanup from here? Absolutely, the province will be engaged in this cleanup. Uh, they, uh, there is a process where as the damage escalates, it triggers the province to become involved to help us with our cleaning up the initiatives. So yes, I trust that will answer that question for you. Yes. One more question. In terms of, you, you talked about you know, the weather is going to change or is anticipated to change again. Um, you know, when the water that's free flowing now starts to freeze, it could obviously cause some problems for underground infrastructure, pipes freezing and things like that. Is that something that the city is, is concerned about that, you know, while we're seeing flood damage now, there may be more damage to come in the foreseeable future? Absolutely. And that's, I mentioned earlier that uh, we, we are anticipating, I think, uh, uh, we'd, we'd love to not have any. It would be great if we don't have any, but we are anticipating uh, water breaks. Um, I think uh, there was some discussion earlier, I think, with the uh, water sewer about how much uh, frost is in the ground and, and how it's changed over the last few days. So there's a lot of uh, shifting earth. Uh, there's a lot of pipes that are you know, expanding and contracting and um, a lot of ground that's doing the same. So we've got, uh, uh, this is probably a good chance that we are going to have some problems.